Hey everyone. Uh, just getting a little set up. What did I do with my wax? Give me a little bag over here. Okay, so tonight I'm going to go ahead and I've gotten off Amazon a couple of cheap little wood pieces. Um, so they're really just, I got a huge pack of them. So I figure I can do little frames and savings on them. Um, I can also go ahead and um, punch holes in them and attach them and for various things. And my desk is a bit of a mess. I was painting different things earlier. So let me get those out of the way. And I'm gonna grab out my wax so I can wax the wood before. Usually you can use mini wax, I just have a little bit of extra wax here. Uh, let's see. So I'm just going to pull up my Facebook, make sure that I'm on the right page. And I am. Yay. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So if you pop on and see this, go ahead and hit like. Um, you can also comment, um, sprinkle the video where you get the little arrow to share. And I was trying to figure out how to do the wild and freight, <coughs> but this piece of wood was not really, not really going to be big enough to ca capture it all. Um, so I'm just going to do one for wild, one for free, um, and then I might do a third one for the end, depending on how these two come out. But I'm just going to put a little bit of wax on one side of them before I open up the transfer and get started on it. Okay, and I'm just going to take off my face. It was cool in here, but... Cats have, the novelty of going outside is wearing off on them, so that's good, I guess. All right. So we're just going to take a little wax and put it on the board. Let's cover in there. Usually once you wax the wood, waxing the wood is not... It's more or less to protect your transfer. Um, so it doesn't pull up any splinters or anything like that. Um, if you have a really rough piece of wood, you might want to sand it down before you wax it. Um, but just a light coating, just, just a little layer of protection. Don't, doesn't need a lot. I just take a little glob and just put it on. And just keep smoothing it out till it's all, all gone. And it, it dries really fast too, so let's see what we've got. And I guess I can get a little bit more down here. I'm only gonna wax one side because I'm only doing one side of these. I mean you can you could do both sides because you could do different sayings on both sides or end up switching them up. and figure out what colors I want to use. This is, the Wild and Free one is the monthly transfer for March the club members and designers got. Um, so if you like this one, you only have like two days left to sign up for the club to get it. So you still still have that option. Okay, and I'm just going to do one at a time and fuzz them up. Cloth from over here. Yeah, it's pretty close to the time where I need to, to wash this. <laughs> it's getting pretty matted down. So, yeah, I guess I'll do it all day. So I'm going to fuzz the whole thing at once and then I'm going to put the wood under both of the words um, just for convenience. And I've done this transfer, wow, I don't even know how many times I've done it. Um, so you can see it stained a little bit for green and reddish areas that I did it on. 
um, I'll show you one of the other ones I did. So I did the whole transfer and we had our um, team day where we did a whole bunch and this was the one that I had done. So like the green didn't really stay in leaves, but the orange did. <laughs> Some reason orange does tend to stay in the transfer. It doesn't hurt the transfer at all. Um, it just doesn't look that pretty. <laughs> But you'll get lots of uses out of it. So, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'll set that all first. And I'm gonna try to line these up um, underneath it. So I want to be able to get the whole word in. And if I can get some flowers in with it, that'd be great too. I'll add those as well. Okay. And I'm just going to smooth it down, and I'm going to put the other one under the free while I've got it on there. And just try to even it out a bit. Trying to get the most use out of my board <laughs> as possible. I'm just going to smooth it down, make sure that I don't get any air bubbles and stuff out of it. Um, I'm going to grab my chalk paste, not paint, but paste. I was painting with these, obviously, I got like, once I, I painted this with um, the pink Waverly, is it pink slipper, I think it's called? Oh, actually it's called plaid, no clue why. Does say plaid? Huh. No, ballet slipper. His ballet slipper. So once I once this finishes drying, it's still a little bit tacky. I will wax it, and then I can even put transfer stuff on that as well. Okay. So what colors do I want to be use? Um, I kind of want them to be bright on the wood because it's lighter. And so I've got. I also want to do flowers too. I'm going to grab my eucalyptus because that is one of my newer paste formula ones. And I haven't actually opened it yet. I do, of course, have my shimmers too. I oh, want some bold colors. So I think I'll use Tulip for the Wild and Free for the actual letters themselves. I'm going to do one at a time so I can do the wild and then I will pull it up and take the wood out from underneath it and then I will do the free because I don't want to sit on there too long. I don't want the chalk piece drying in the silk screen. I'm going to grab some of my little squeegees and I'm going to use um, my mini that I cut in half because it's just going to because it's so small and I want to do the outside a different color, the flowers and stuff, from the letters. So I'm going to do the letters in Tulip, which is one of the In Vogue seasonal colors. And these are all new paste, new paste formula. So they stay wetter a little bit longer. It gives you a little bit more time to play with it. So if you've used the older chalk paste, you, you won't feel like you're being rushed or anything. I mean, if it did start to dry when you wanted to pull it up, you can push it right back down and put some fresh stuff on top of it. And the chalk paste versus the ink, the paste is very forgiving. Because um, even though I'm doing this on wood, I'm going to be able to um, get it off of the wood. Now, even if I have to end up sanding it down a little bit. I'll be able to get the chalk paste off. So, just something to keep in mind. Well, the wild and free is, you know, kind of like with spring opening up, but, you know, it's really good any time of the year. And you can take out little sections of it. You could take out, a lot of people have been taking out the flowers and doing them on like on the cutouts of the bunnies or 
um, the truck, just to do a little variety. So once you get a couple of transfers, you can really start mixing and matching them. Like, oh, I'll try this or I'll try that. And then you can um, eventually, once you start doing it, you'll start looking around like, oh, I could chalk that. Oh, I could eat that. Okay, so I'm gonna put my guava to the, or my tulip to the side. So I did the wild part. Now I just wanna do the outside of it. Um, and I think, let's see. I haven't opened this one yet. The foam seal for your protection lid is keep it on keep it in there so keep it on your lid you can use a little piece a little glue to tack it down or a little glue dot um and then i'm gonna go ahead and grab another little mini squeegee and just push it i'm just pushing it down instead of grabbing a stir stick um and i'm just gonna go ahead and add some of it And I'm going to end up being a little bit more messier around the edge. Just want to make sure if you're doing a little bit messier stuff that um, you're not mixing your colors if you're sticking this back into the jar. Because I don't want that tulip, which is in the red range, um, getting into my jar of green. Or if I was using white, I definitely don't want anything getting in the white. Because uh, then it'll start to change the color of my white paste. Just gives it a little color on the edge and then I think I'll use like another bold color for the flowers I'll grab my harvest so harvest is was well, one of the seasonal colors for the fall and I think there's still some in stock on the website once it sells out they're not going to be restocking it. So if it is one you like, it's that autumn kind of color. Um, not quite gold, not quite copper, just kind of like in between, but it does have a really gold feel to it. So I'm just gonna go over the flowers in this one. I've got the little and symbol here, which I'm just going to do in gold and just pretend it's like part of a flower. Because Once I get these done, I can decide if I want to do another one in the middle that's just the and symbol. Some of the hardest parts of these are just deciding what colors you're going to use. When you first start out, you don't have a ton of colors usually. Um, so you just use what you have, but then once you get more and more options, then you're trying to decide, what do I want to use? Because you have so many different options. And it's good to have options. But you can also mix colors together. So if you get white in any color, you can, you know, change the shade of it. Same thing with if you get black or if you add like a shimmer frost or any of the shimmers together, they will make any of the plain ones have a little glitter sparkle to them. All right, so this one is done. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up from the wood underneath it. Try to get a grip on it. Okay, the wild is soaking in a bit. I don't know if you can see that, so it's not as crisp. So I'm gonna go put it back down. And I'm gonna go over the wild part again. Um, just because that was what I first did and it does is sinking into the wood. Um, so I'm just going to go over it again just so it has another fresher layer. And I'm not sure if it's because I did that to start with. I did the wild first and then the flowers, but it didn't take too long. So I think it just started soaking into the wood. But as you can see, sorry if my hand's in the way. Um, you can just go ahead and just add some fresh stuff to it and then pull it up. And that should fix any problem that we had. Okay, 
and try to pull it up again. And I did mix some of my green and yellow on the flower. That's all right. It looks, actually doesn't look too bad that way. All right. So I've got my little wild one. Let me set it to the side to dry. And then I'm going to do my free one. Well, this time I'm going to do the flowers first and then see if that's the reason that um the wild was kind of like a little stuck. Okay, should be done with my eucalyptus now. And then I'll do the gold flowers. Wow, I think I've gotten quiet because I'm concentrating on the flowers. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and just ask. Or hit like, comment, anything you want. If you're catching it on a replay, just go ahead and hit replay or hit like. Um, I'm actually going to grab this and kind of like drag the green and the harvest together um, because when it did that accidentally on the first part, it looked really good. So I'm just going to encourage those to blend together. Not completely, but just a little hint of them inside each other. There we go. All right. So then I'm done with that one and this one. So the last thing I need to do is a tulip for the free. I'm going to close those up so I don't actually stick anything in them and now I just have to do the free parts when you're doing ones like this you can always take your stir stick and just like plop on a glob of it and then spread it around just play keep playing around with it and just figure out what um, works best for you what you like doing There's the multi-tool you can use, which when you're using it, it kind of feels more like a paintbrush that you're painting it on. Um, there's different kind of squeegees on the end of brushes as well. So you do have lots of options. And if you saw when I did the watercolor technique, um, that's just using a paintbrush and watering down your chalk, your chalk paste. Let's see how this one came out and see if it's ready to dry. Okay, much better. So I think this one looks better than the wild one. But I did blend the green and yellow together. Gave it more of a faded look. So I think the last part that I'm going to do, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, and then I'm going to do a third one um, 
for in the middle and then I will um, punch holes in each of them so I can have like a three hanging of wild and free and attach them uh, once they dry, of course. So let me put a little bit of wax on this. So that this wax can dry while I clean off the transfer so I can use that middle part again. So if you have a stack of these or something, you can always just, you can wax them at any point and then just set them off to the side and just pull them out and use them. You can do multiple layers, whatever works best for you. you just keep experimenting. That's what I do. <laughs> and then I tell you what works and what doesn't work and so that you can just learn from my mistakes and you don't have to make the same mistakes that I make. Oops, got a little chalk paste on the edge. That's all right. Okay, where is my little towel? Alright, so I'm just going to spray and clean this up. Okay, it's not going to be perfect because I just want to, especially the middle part, get it cleared so I can um, put it on another board. And if I have extra room around the end because I don't want the wild and wild or free letters on it, um, I might have to move the transfer around and get some. Um, And get some of the flowers or something onto it. Because I just did that, I'm going to grab my Clorox wipe because the Clorox wipes will actually speed up the drying process. And I'll go back over and clean it better afterwards, but I just want to get like the basics out of it. And of course, it's all glittery because I use the Harbor Shimmist. Shimmer Harvest. So this side of it is super clean. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to... <laughs> Notice you can see the wild and free on there. I'm um, going to flip it over. Let's take up the chalk piece that I have on the desk. Let's get that out of my way. All right. And I'm just going to clean the back of this off. I just want to make sure my letters and stuff get clear. So why would you need to clean the back side of it? Um, Basically because when you clean the front side, you end up pushing stuff through the screen onto the towel or whatever you have underneath. So you need to make sure that you've got, just in case it slid around or anything, you want to make sure that you've got a second chance to get those corners and those edges nice and clean. And obviously you don't have to have a towel underneath it, I don't at this point, but um, you can. It helps soak up the water underneath because you'll notice when I pull this up, there'll be some water underneath. I'll just wipe it up with a towel. Still got some glitter in those flowers. So, let's go ahead and clean this off so it's dry. So I can do my last little part of the end. I don't want it to be too wet when I stick it on the wood, so I'm trying to get the Crocs white to dry off the part that I definitely am going to have the wood on the wood. The other part I'm not super concerned about. It's the alcohol in the Clorox wipes or disinfectant wipes that speeds up the drying process. Okay, so I think it's pretty good. Just make sure. Just trying to make 
make sure that side over there is dry. That's the side that my paste is going to go on. I think it's pretty good. Right. Got my wood. And then we're going to get try to get the end part in the middle. I hear you, Lucy. Don't know what you're doing out there, but I hear you. I'm going to try to mix my colors again. I'm going to do a little bit variation of it um, just so you can see the different techniques. And so I like the second one better than the first one, and I'll probably like the third one better than the first one. So I'm just putting on in the areas where I want the green, just a little dab. I already have some on here, so. Grab another stir stick. So pretty much for the future, this is what the stir sticks are gonna be used for. Um, because with the new paste formula, you really don't have a need to stir them up like you used to. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of spread these across. The green and the gold into the gold and the gold into the green. And I can see I'm going to have some blank spaces, so I'll plan on um, putting it around the edge again and adding, trying to add some flowers. Okay. Remember that any, if you, when you're mixing the colors around, the darker colors are going to overwhelm the lighter colors. It's just the way it's gonna go. I'm gonna add a little more green because it's getting taken over by the gold. At least in this section it is. Okay, so it looks like the last thing I've got is the little tulip or the little end for the middle. I don't need much of the tulip filling in. Sorry. Got my hand in the way for you guys. Hey. These surfaces, I got them in a large pack from Amazon. Um, forget how many there were, but there's tons of them in there. There's got to be at least 20, 30 or so. Um, so I came up with this idea to kind of like layer them. As I'll be able to tack them together. Yeah, I like it, the blending of the colors much better. So in this one, you can see the flowers. So when I started out, I did the flowers and the leaves really separately. This one, I started overlapping them. And the middle one, I really overlapped them. So the flowers look a little different, but I'll get like a little, I'll either, I don't know if my crocodile will work on it. It should. It's about the right same thickness as the chalk chip. Um, so I should be able to punch the holes in them and um, hook them together with string. I think that'll hold more securely than um, hot glue on the back. And then I can always chalk a different design on the back afterwards. So there's my little different variation on this month's, on this month's, um, 
Club Transfer. So the next one's one goes along with the theme of the wings that they've been doing. Um, it's got a couple of birds on it. It goes along with, um, I'm not sure where the saying comes from. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to use my, once it dries, my crocodile to put holes in it and, and to hook them down to the next level. Kind of like ones that you've seen in the stores and stuff. Um, I do have an Easter one back here. So kind of the idea that I'm thinking about is something like this where you've got, you know, you just hang it down. So I just want to hang them like these together. Pace away. So, what do you guys think? My little wild and free. So I can really do this with any things. And I just kind of tried to disguise the little and that overlapped. So that's breaking them up, and this is them together. So this was the one I did when our team group had a day. Those are the two different options. Forget what else I did on it. I did a couple different designs on it though. So you don't always have to do it like this. Some and like I said, some people just like I know Melissa did took the just the flowers, not the letters, but just the flowers itself and put them on like the bunnies. Um, you can do it on anything. So that was my little different project tonight. I am loving looking out my front window of the front porch and seeing the welcome to our porch. So the shimmer splash, it goes on this darker color, but once it dries, it's a little bit lighter shade. It is beautiful. It just makes you want to go swimming. That's probably why they call it splash. Okay. Um, I am going to sign off and you guys can always catch on the replay anything that you missed and then hit like if you can. Um, and comment or share anytime you do any action on the video, um, like liking it or commenting or hitting the little arrow button to share. Um, that just puts it back in the feed so other people can see it if they haven't already. All right? Night, guys. Bye.